Okay, uh, it's my very pleasant duty to, uh, to tell you about the outcome of our uh, third call for papers and to announce the winners and then to have a panel discussion with a few who you've invited here. And I'm gonna try to save some time because I wanna be sure that we have, by the way, that was, uh, I hope you enjoyed this talk. That was uh, really, uh, I, I thought, uh, you know, the message about humans and machines just, I think really deeply, re okay, anyhow, uh, without further ado, uh, the, the third call was, but, but, but the theme of the institute has really been about AI, machine learning, and really to develop this theme of um, uh, science and technology for digital transformation. But the way, we've, uh, the way we've decided to engage with this in combination with the steering committee is to really have the calls be focused on current problems. And each year, you know, the first year it was about what you could do about the pandemic. The second one is about energy and climate change. And the second one is really not unlike, uh, you know, what you've been hearing about both from Tom and today from uh, uh, Kasparov, from Mr. Kasparov, was about techniques for resilience to attacks. And uh, uh, so here are uh, so, so, some of the... Uh, so, so some of the winners, and uh, I, I, I think we are go going to go through a few of them. The first one is high performance, probably. Oh, so we, you know, we I didn't. I decided not to we sort of we subject you to the statistics of the number of proposals, and all of that, and you know how many won, and so on. But we really had a fantastic collection of proposals, and uh, I think here are some really strong ones. Uh, one by. Uh, Zika Coulter and Richard Zhang, uh, one from Carnegie Mellon, and uh, Zico's here too, and uh, Richard's here as well. High performance, ro provably robust methods for cybersecurity, uh, cybersecurity tasks on the critical infrastructure. And it uses uh, semi definite programming relaxations to design, to design machine learning algorithms that are robust to adversarial inputs. Uh, the the uh, scalable, secure machine learning, and in the presence of adversaries, it's uh, by two of my colleagues, uh, John Kubiatowicz and Anthony Joseph. Anthony is here, and the pro proposal focuses on tampering in the deployment of a machine learning algorithm all the way from the cloud to the edge. You, you know, I have to say, Anthony was uh, really a pioneer in thinking many, almost 10, 12 years ago in a paper with Doug Tigar, about the fact that adversaries would attack machine learning algorithms and coming up with, uh, I think, one of the first papers to demonstrate that. So this goes all the way from the cloud to the edge. Uh, Bo Lee uh, from uh, UIUC and my colleague Don Song on resilient cyber infrastructure learning systems, so cyber learning systems, distributed learning systems, federated learning systems, and uh, to make them robust to data poisoning and uh, test time attacks. Uh, I think we have uh, Bo here. Uh, ben Zhao from the University of Chicago, uh, Kalina and uh, Arjun Pagoji are talking about, uh, y y you know, is it possible to come up with uh, theoretical limits and guarantees sort of almost in an information theoretic sense on what the performance bounds could be for machine learning algorithms? It's really an intriguing uh, 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 proposal about how you'd get at these methods. And uh, so this is in that, that area of uh, robustness. Anomaly detection, AI techniques, perhaps in supervised and unsupervised learning, to provide early detection of uh, anomalies that might be indicative of unauthorized access, denial of service, or data exfiltration, all the things that uh, Tom talked about. Uh, uh, here are some of the uh, winning proposals. Continuous and automatically discovering and remedying internet-facing security vulnerabilities. It's a team led by Nick Feimster from the University of Chicago, uh, Stanford, and Prateek Mittal. And it focuses on anomaly detection using internet features and identifying obscure internet services that may be vulnerable. Uh, by, by the way, this proposal really addresses some of the things that Tom was uh, pleading for us to look at. And so it was really striking to hear this. 
my colleagues, uh, Javad LeBay and Somaye, with Stephen Lowe at Caltech and uh, Jan Kromquist at KTH. And we, it's also a collaboration with Jeremy Lawrence, who I think was here yesterday from EPRI. And it is about uh, robustifying uh, deep neural networks for, uh, uh, for power systems and detecting attacks on the, the data used for power systems estimation and control. And the other thing is to operate through attacks. That's the robust operations. Uh, another one by my colleague, Alberto, who was also, there you are, <laughs> good. Uh, Physics-based AI, physics-aware AI-based. This again, you know, this was a big topic of discussion in one of the sessions yesterday about, uh, you know, uh, bridging the gap between model-based techniques and model-free techniques and what exactly that would mean for cyber intrusion. And this is a very uh, intriguing proposal with uh, Ming Jin from Virginia Tech and Carlo Fischione from KTH and CC Liu Chenching Liu from uh, Virginia Tech. And it is applied to traffic anomalous traffic detection and detecting spoof measurement packets. Uh, now, for APTs, advanced persistent threats, and you know, advanced persistent threats again has been in the, uh, in the news a lot. So one is APTs when applied to transportation networks. And how is it, to, you know, so again, ever since Italian Job, the movie Italian Job, we've had this notion of using traffic lights to create traffic jams and prevent emergency vehicles and so on and so forth. I can see Alberto doesn't want to hear Italian Job here. <laughs> 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 this is a fantastic team. I have to say, there's all kinds of wonderful things about this team, but they're going to try it out. There's a section of freeway, I-24, it says, in Nashville, that they've gotten permission to try out the, te the, the techniques on. <laughs> uh, not Rome, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think it's an uh, intriguing proposal. Sorry, I should Carl Gunter. Uh, Maria Laura de la Monarque and uh, John Lee Bowley and uh, Dan Work is the one who's going to be doing the... And, and, and uh, my colleagues, David Wagner, Mike Jordan, and uh, Jacob Steinhardt, Nika Hakthalab, Wern Paxson, uh, and uh, Wenkate Lee, who has uh, some wonderful data on these APTs. And they're going to focus on an analysis of bringing new methods of... Uh, you know, so again, another topic of discussion yesterday was sort of uh, multiplayer game theory and scaling of multiplayer games and learning on games, and that was another hot topic. So that's what they're going to be doing here. And then securing for critical f infrastructure, a uh, proposal led by uh, uh, Arso, Cyril uh, Valentin Arso, on a cyber safety cage for networks with... Uh, Roberto Guanciale, uh, Rehan Jabarwan, and uh, Brighton Godfrey on using r really this explicable AI for identifying anomalies and generating test cases. Then uh, uh, Nikita Borisov on security for large scale infrastructures using probabilistic programming with Gear, who I, Gear should have been here. I heard he had a little uh, torqued his knee recently, but. Uh, uh, Sasa uh, Misailovich and Cyan Mitra from UIUC and David Nickel also from UIUC. And, and this is about, uh, you, you know, rather than do deep neural networks, why not do probabilistic programming to be able to do in effect what uh, deep neural networks do uh, for these cyber physical systems. Uh, Tucho Fan from MIT with Guanang Chu is also going to use... Uh, this compositional neural certificates also sort of explicable AI using this machinery of uh, local Lyapunov functions. Uh, by, by the way, you know, since Gary Kasparov mentioned, I should say, so, you know, Lyapunov techniques is such a staple of this. And Lyapunov, of course, was a resident of Kharkiv, a town that we've gotten to know well in recent ones. And so she's going to be using this, Chucha Fan is going to be using this to train neural networks. Uh, democratizing AI-driven security workflows for critical energy infrastructure. 
a team led by Vyas Shekhar at uh, Carnegie Mellon with Julia Fanti, Larry Pelagi, Luho Bauer, Anthony Rowe, and again, Jeremy Lawrence and a different team with, uh, with the CMU folks and uh, NREL. Uh, and this is for software solutions of critical infrastructures and uh, it, it is to come up with, a is more, the, the other one was perhaps more uh, centralized and this is about decentralized ways, that's why it's called democratizing. Uh, Sanjit is working on semantic adversarial analysis for securing uh, secure infrastructure with Yasser Shukri. And this is really to, you, you know, these formal methods really seem to be at odds with AI-driven methods, and they're going to try to do a rapprochement of uh, formal methods and deep neural networks. Okay, and on the forensics, this is a quite, quite, you know, quite a breadth. I, I, I'm, gonna move, I'm moving along a little more quickly than I should. But Yorhi Dan and Clara Narstedt, Sarah Bameen, and Hendrik Sanbay, I know uh, Henrik is here, but perhaps you're, he is also here. And they were focusing on real-time attack analysis for cyber-physical systems, and really about attacks on SCADA. You know, it's listed as the top vulnerability of our process control systems. And uh, they, they, I know that Sarab and uh, Henrik and others have had a long track record of uh, talking to SCADA vendors and uh, Really getting them to, you know, you heard uh, Mr. Kasparov talk about how coffee machines are uh, the greatest vulnerability. So it's in the, in the spirit of those uh, discussions. Uh, Vince Bohr with uh, ha, 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 Hang Tang Tong and Lei Ying is going to be talking about statistical learning theory and graph neural networks for identifying attack sources. You know, attribution of attacks is really. Critical, you know, you can't go after the wrong people. It has rather disastrous consequences. And uh, Vince has been using these graph neural networks uh, in some novel ways, and that's what this proposal is about. Uh, ben Chow is also going to be using uh, similar graph theoretic methods, but for other kinds of forensics, data poisoning, and adversarial examples to fool trained models. So this is like uh, robust machine learning is really, and then. Uh, you know, financial networks and blockchains and securing blockchains are all certainly part of the vernacular today. And Don Song, she's with uh, Dan Klein and Bo Lee are going to work on uh, decentralized, uh, protecting the decentralized financial infrastructure. Uh, another one on blockchain forensics by an information theorist from University of Illinois. And then I, I'm, I, you know, perhaps not doing adequate justice, but uh, let, let me go through this because I'd like to get the panel on board. Uh, so Julia Fanti on test case generation, you know, there's generative adversarial networks. They have a way of thinking, you have a way of thinking about them as zero sum games. And how do you uh, generate automatic, automatic test cases for them using those? And then one which is really about a vulnerability that's, here and now, which is JavaScript vulnerability detection by Pasarianu from uh, Carnegie Mellon with uh, a CMU team. And finally, about insider threats. Uh, Carl Gunter, uh, Bo Lee, and Gang Wang talking about evolving insider threats. And this is one which also tries to think about building models for insiders and in innocent insiders as well as possible other compromised insiders. Uh, another one proposal by uh, John Burge, who I saw yesterday, and perhaps uh, Mr. Hay, who I haven't seen, about, again, modeling insider threats and being cognizant of how insiders adapt their strategies. Then uh, Cedric Langbord on uh, nudging uh, cyber hygiene and uh, <laughs> really how do you get people to do this. So, you, you know, I think the total count of the proposal, you know, it's been our biggest uh, set of awards to date. We are, we're still talking to the investigators to make sure that uh, we have the budgets to line up for them to do it. So we, uh, but I think there's 24, is that right? 24 awards. And, and you can see the breadth of uh, 
activity. I mean, I, I, we wanted to put this up a little bit after you're having heard uh, Tom as well as Gary. You know, there are, these are, we, we have uh, a way of, I mean, this is really what we're all thinking about. And Gary, you know, this man-machine interface is really how we, you know, we have to get into this business of really trying to model what you said. You know, you just had some really wonderful themes about opting versus uh, taking the decisions and how you model those. And, and our